Hey guys, Jared Littner. Just got in from Dayton, Tennessee. Day and a half ago, I was at Lake Chickamauga for stage four of the Major League Fish and Bass Pro Tour. And now, day and a half later, like I said, I'm here in Huntington Beach. The plan is to go out with Captain Justin Reynolds. We're gonna catch some spotted bay bass on the same rods that I used all season long so far, showing the versatility of the rod line. And um, left my ranger in Alabama, here in the Saltwater Ranger. The guys from Ritual Angling Tackle Warehouse, we're gonna have a good time, catch some spotties. Welcome back to my home turf, man. Thanks, man. It is good to be back in California. Yeah, this is uh, the area I grew up fishing, saltwater bass, spotted bay bass, which is the target species of today. Sweet. So it's a lot like bass fishing then, right? I just got back from Chickamauga, so yep. I'm, I'm in tune with the largemouth bass, but you're telling me the spotted bay bass are similar, I guess. I mean, they're pretty much, they'll do the same things, do exact same things. Their, their spawning activity is a little different than a largemouth, but a bass is a bass. So we got the ritual angling rods, the same ones I use on the bass tour. We're gonna fish them in the salt water and catch some spotted bay bass and maybe who knows what else, huh? Yeah, there's halibut, corvina, croakers, white sea bass, all kinds of cool stuff in here. There's sea bass in here? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, we might get some dinner. Fish fry. Oh, look at that. Got him. Look at nice one too. Oh yeah, jig. Jared. You want me to net it? Look at that. First cast. It's a good one. Put him in the tank. That was a nice fish, man. He's right where he's supposed to be. There's a... Uh... Just like a bass. Yeah. Yeah. He's a bass. He is a bass. Right where he's supposed to be. So this this seawall, this, all this riprap, that jetty into this seawall right here, there's a big bed of healthy eelgrass. And uh, because of the way the tide is right now, with the tide flooding in, it's just a good big area for these things to come in here and spread out. And big fish like that will just come in with the tide and hole up in these little eelgrass pockets or in those rocks. and that fish was right where you're supposed to be. I mean, it's kind of similar to the St. Lawrence River where I fish a bunch, you know, the current and the small mouse sit down in the eelgrass and they got milfoil and things like that. But you can see where I caught those two, it's kind of like a little eddy right there. So, I mean, same thing as bass fishing. But the cool thing is, is just last week, I used the same rod, 7.5, medium heavy. My main deal in Chickamauga was a uh, tower shot. So same rod, the only difference, well, same reel, Shimano Metanium HG, MGL HG. The only difference is, is there I was power shotting with 14. I went up to 16 pound shooter here, but uh, just throwing, you said a little jig, you're throwing a little swim bait. This here is a Eco Pro uh, Kara tungsten jig. I got a little creature bait on there. I guess, what is it, mimic a crab or something? I mean, yeah. what do these fish eat? These fish eat like purple crab and uh, they'll eat mussels, they'll eat Fin bait, you know, anchovy, smelt, sardine, little mackerel fry. But uh, so they buy like spinner baits and jerk yeah, baits. Yeah, they'll bite the blades, especially when the sun gets high in the air. When we when we switch back to uh, Huntington Harbor later in the afternoon, we'll get into some bladed bladed bites for sure. So it's just like I mean, this is this is like some of the areas I fish at St. Lawrence, sea walls and current breaks. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Well, that one bite. Dark sleeper. Short, but it's a spotty. Yeah. It's like a little inch and a half swim bait. Yeah, it's a two inch, two inch, three eighths ounce dark sleeper. They just choke it. What rod are you throwing that one on? This is on the uh, R1 series 7.1 medium heavy. Medium heavy? Yeah. I'm not as big as you. I don't need the 7.5. <laughs> hey, that was a penalty. That was. That was a bad boat release, two oh, minutes. Oh yeah, I got a. You're below the gunnel, Mr. Reynolds. That's right. I love learning all that stuff. Yeah. Do you realize when that stuff's going down, my whole family, we're up at, you know, watching that stuff as soon as it, I'm up there, as soon as you guys are fishing, looking at the score tracker, and then at 7 a.m. our time, it's like <laughs> streaming. So it's how exciting, do you, How dude. do you get any work done? I don't work. 
So, you know, what's kind of crazy is like we're literally in Los Angeles. This is LA County. This is LA County. City of Long Beach, LA County. How many miles out could we catch a tuna right now? Less than 20. Less than 20 miles. Yeah. There's calico, I mean, there's everything. Yeah. But you yeah. don't even have to have a boat and you come in here and yeah. catch these bass. Yeah, you can just walk the shoreline, float tube. We grew up float tubing and canoeing and kayaking in here, you know? It's kind of like a, I guess it's gotten more popular, but it is kind of like a hidden little gem oh, that yeah. you guys got. I mean, yeah. was it a lot better when you were growing up or is it about the same? Well, we didn't have as many of the kids walking the docks like we are now, right. so. Hey, not fishing is a crime. That's right, totally. So if you don't fish. Yeah, it's, I'm happy about it. I want the sport yeah. to grow. Right. It's just, you know, the pressure's here now. These fish right. aren't dumb. So I, I think it's great the sport's growing and stuff like that, but um, it also helps us evolve as anglers because these things get wise to what we're throwing and we got to find new stuff that they'll bite and all that jazz. Just but. like bass bass fishing, yep. you know? But what, so they have, you're telling me, or somebody was telling me, maybe Randy, that they have actual spotted bass tournaments. Like oh yeah, spotted regular, bass tournaments, yeah. Like five fish limit oh, or? Yeah. Same, five alive, same exact format. And there's prize money, you sign up just like a bass tournament. Yeah. Have you ever entered? Oh yeah. I've have you won? I fished, yeah, absolutely. I fished the SWBA, the Saltwater Bass Association. I fished that for 10 years. And the last tournament I fished, I fished with Randy and we won. Wait a minute, Randy's actually won a tournament? He's won a couple. Him We're and gonna have to introduce you guys to Randy if yeah. you don't know him. Yeah, and check this out. You probably, so, probably won't believe the story if, yeah. after you see this guy. Yeah, check, so check this out. Randy, right, I grew up with him, went to high school with him. He grew up uh, in line skating with Matt Florentino, head of marketing for AFCO, right? Okay, yep. Your, your guy at AFCO. Yep. They actually hold the heaviest bag weight in all of the tournament, all calicos in the history of the association. No kidding. Yeah, like 36 something. Randy. Randy and Matt. I believe Matt. Randy but and Randy? Matt. Yep. And that thing's not going down. That that record isn't going down. Wow. It's been there for close to 10 years now, and there, no one's going to break it with five calicos. If you catch those sewer cod sand bass, you know, five nines, you'll beat it. But pure calico bass fishing on the beach, no one's going to beat that. It's going to stand. It's pretty cool. Wow. Proud of my friends for that. That is cool. I just like giving Randy a hard time. Of course. Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. See, look, there's Randy right there. Yeah, there he is. In his boat. There's both of them. He just poached us. Yeah. My son's over there in the boat, so he's not being a good example. He just poached our best spot. Thanks, Randy. I mean, who does that? Randy. Better get bit in this little butt crack right here. Shoot the moon. There you go. Yeah, Dude, there's buddy. no bite. Ned Rig. There's no bite. Oh, look at that. On the Ned. On the yammy fish. That's funny, dude. Same setup, I just caught an 810 and Chickamauga on. I'm catching these spotted bay bass. That's right. Same setup. 7.5, ah, ah, they got teeth. Ah. Dude. You handle the bass, right? I need, a, right? I need an AFCO fishing glove. Look at that little guy, that's cool. A little yammy fish. Run all the way down there and drop my bait and run back. Yep, do it. No, no, I don't want to get in trouble. No, you're not going to get in trouble. Okay. World's longest retrieve. This would be a three minute leaving the boat penalty. I'm out of line. <laughs> this is officially strolling the bait. Yeah, there he is. He's on. What do you got? I don't know yet. Could be anything. Spotty. Spotty. Big, big nice one. one. Man, that is a nice one. Sweet. Number two pencil lip. That one that one ate the uh, half ounce war baits underspin on a little three inch swim bait, but uh, this is on our uh, R2 casting swim bait rod, the 7-Eleven swim bait rod. Beautiful fish. So growing up in here, fishing out of my first little boat, I had a 1977 Sears Game Fisher. And uh, whenever it was tough, 
we could come here because this was the shadiest spot in the in the harbor, you know? Right. And they'll just pile up in here midday, you know, if there's not a lot of current, there's not a lot of tide or anything, no movement. Sometimes they just stack up in here. It was kind of always a place you could come and work a bite out, you know? Well, it's kind of crazy because it's like, you know, like bridges at Shasta or Orville or something, you know? I mean, it's like the typical, it's the same structure. Yeah, same exact structure. Same structure, spotted bass or largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. Yep. Spotted they're, bay bass are using the same thing. Yeah, they're relating the exact same way. It's crazy. All right, man. Well, it's been a kind of a cool mor morning. We've got some, I guess, nice spotties. Yeah, huh? some good sized fish. Yeah, and we went, we just fished a really cool spot you took us to, kind of industrial, underneath a, uh, actually a major road here in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's one of those things, just real, real similar to bass fishing. You got to bounce around, try a bunch of spots. So we're actually going to take a lunch break, I guess, right? You got yep. a cool spot picked out for us. Yep, we're good. And then have some food and relax for a little bit. And, and then you're talking about going to another harbor or marina for. We'll go back to where we started this morning, Anaheim Bay, where I keep my boat, and we'll fish in there and finish up in there. Hopefully, we get like a late afternoon, early evening bite. So you just keep bouncing around? Yeah, that moon phase, I think, has them a little well, funky. I think I got big fish, so you're buying lunch. Yeah, cool. <laughs> no problem. All right, we're going to grab a bite and then uh, move over to the other marina. Yep. Uh, make sure to stay tuned, though, for part two of the Huntington Beach Spotted Bass Beatdown. And uh, make sure to like, share, tag a friend. See you guys next week.